100 years ago in 1915, 1314 Broad Street was a construction site. Excavators and bricklayers, carpenters and heating contractors were busy at their task of building Camden's first city library. It had been an arduous journey getting to that point. That journey began in 1914, as best we can reckon, at a lecture to the Kershaw County Teachers Institute and all of the factors leading up to the acquisition and completion of the Camden Public Library, there is one constant, Sarah Sadie Kennedy Von Tresco. Interest in public libraries was at an all-time high in the early 1900s. During the 1800s, library societies had been established in many communities of the state, but these were subscription libraries which required membership for access to the holdings. Most of those were destroyed or confiscated by Union troops during the Civil War. Only the Charleston and the Georgetown Library Society survived. Robert McMillan Kennedy, the head librarian at the University of South Carolina, was a leader in the push for development of public libraries in our state. He was also our own R.M. Kennedy of the well-loved and used historic Camden volumes by Kirkland and Kennedy. Kennedy was a Camden native and a cousin of Sarah Kennedy Von Tresco. In 1914, Kennedy presented a program to the Kershaw County Teachers Institute. No doubt, Sarah Von Tresco, a teacher of long standing in our community, attended that program. By July 9, 1914, Sarah was at work. She worked on the library acquisition as president of the Camden Civic League. Her files on the public library for Camden begin with a letter of endorsement from the Camden Chamber of Commerce. It instructs, quote, that the secretary inform Mrs. E.C. Von Tresco that we, the members of the Camden Chamber of Commerce, endorse her public spirit in this matter and assure her of our willingness and desire to cooperate with her in securing this library for Camden. By July 16th, she had contacted the Latta Carnegie Library to ask about their building and the library grants from the Carnegie Corporation. Mr. W.C. Allen suggested that she contact their architects, Wilson and Somperac, in Columbia to get started on preliminary plans. A July 22nd letter to the Carnegie Corporation indicated that she had already begun correspondence with them. By that date, she had convinced City Council to support a $5,000 building grant with an annual income of $500 per year. Camden City Council had only been able to approve the 10% operating cost for a $5,000 building because it was financially strained after the unexpected expense of building a water and light plant for the city. Sarah Von Tresco did not dally when she had made her mind up. The Carnegie Corporation's philanthropic cause between 1883 and 1929 was funding public libraries all over the world. Andrew Carnegie, a Scottish native, built the first Carnegie Library in his hometown of Dunfermline, Scotland. He believed that knowledge should be available for those who wanted to help themselves. Books had been very important to him as he grew up in Allegheny, Pennsylvania. His first public library was built in Braddock, Pennsylvania, near one of his steel mills. In all, 1,689 libraries were constructed in the United States with Carnegie funds. Obtaining those Carnegie funds was an exacting process. There were only four requirements. First, demonstration of the need for a public library. Second, provide the building site. Third, annually provide 10% of the library's construction costs to operate, and fourth, provide free service to all. Dealing with Carnegie's secretary, James Bertram, was the tricky part of the grant. Bertram held the reins for approval of the design and whether it was appropriate for the location. He could be, uh, shall we put it, testy. The Camden plans were originally based on the $5,000 Carnegie Library at Latta. Latta's library was a very plain building compared to other Carnegie structures. The local library committee preferred changes to the Latta plan to accommodate Camden's needs for a more classic looking building. The massing of the two buildings is the same, however the library committee preferred a recessed front door 
which created a front porch, and added a two-part flight of steps with a landing midway up. In the front gable and on the cornices, they requested egg and dart and dental molding. They separated the windows and added a keystone above each. The string course near the foundation of the building was made more substantial. The icing on the cake was the two ionic columns flanking the front door. They also added a small rear extension, which included a small main floor bathroom and a closet. On top of that, they proposed to build the library on a raised terrace, which elevated the building from the ground level some four feet. An article in the paper stated, The members of the League were delighted with the plans, which incorporate simplicity, which Mr. Carnegie demands, and the colonial style of architecture so suitable to Camden and the site chosen. It was to be a grand little building for Camden. James Bertram didn't yet know in September of 1914, when he acknowledged receipt of Camden's application, that he had met his match, Sadie Kennedy Von Tresco. Sadie knew what she wanted, and that was what she was going to get. By November, Wilson and Sampirak presented revised floor plans, and they had been sent to James Bertram for approval. Then on January 5th, 1915, came the first bombshell from Bertram. He wrote, Dear Madam, the plans are not suitable in several respects. The monumental and probably expensive entrance feature that you have on the plans does not seem appropriate or necessary for a $5,000 building. Similarly, there is no adequate return in accommodation or necessity for the expense of the extension behind the main block. The toilet can be in the basement. Sadie replied to Bertram after a month. The square we propose giving for the library is the handsomest one in town, 200 feet by 200 feet, in the heart of the town between the high and grammar schools. Since we are giving such a choice position, we felt warranted to make the frontage a little more ornamental than the Latta Library. Council refused the plan of the Latta Library. Mr. Samparak informs us that $5,000 will build the library as shown in the plans for Camden. The detailed estimate likewise proves it. As for the rear extension, of course, this can be excluded and the toilet put in the basement. One month later, Bertram sent a letter approving the original plans that the library committee approved. The columns grace the front porch today. The toilet is not in the basement. It is in the extension that was planned on the back of the building. Kudos, Sadie. All the while, Sadie was ill and in bed. She wrote the architect on February 4, 1915. I am still under the doctor's treatment and forbidden to transact business, but this is so near to my heart that I am going against orders. Doctor's orders indeed. In April she was writing the architect about the lathe used in the walls, where the heating vents were located, and insulating the heating pipes. In May she was working on what the new book plates should look like. Later that month she was getting advice on which library cataloging system was best. In September, she was deciding between direct and indirect lighting for the reading room. She consulted her friend who was assistant librarian at the University of South Carolina about the matter. Her friend wrote back, If you could have each table with a drop light protected by a green shade, the readers at night would rise up and call you blessed. The Camden Carnegie Library, Sadie's Library, was finished in October of 1915. On Monday evening, January 3rd, 1916, the formal opening of the Camden Public Library was held in the new facility. It was a program of musical performances and speeches. All of the tributes went to Sarah Kennedy Von Tresco. The article stated, It was exceedingly regretted that on account of illness, Mrs. Von Tresco, president of the Library Association, could not be present at the opening exercises. The one who has spent time and energy as no one else has for securing the appropriation from Carnegie, who has worked faithfully with the architect and contractor, electrician and painter, until the building now stands in completeness. 
for the enjoyment of the people of Camden. All honor to Mrs. Von Tresco. Captain Shannon said in his speech that the building was made a reality by the generosity of Andrew Carnegie and the energy and public spirit of Mrs. Sadie Von Tresco. I take the liberty of saying that almost single-handed and with very little active or enthusiastic support, Mrs. Von Tresco has followed up this work until this evening the library building is thrown open to the community in its completeness. Many years later, in 1955, as she showed a visiting couple around Camden, Sadie pointed to the city library building and told them that some people call it Sadie's postage stamp library. Even though the city library combined with the county library in the 1970s and is no longer within these walls, we think Sadie would be proud of the work which goes on in this building today. After all, her nickname was Miss Historic Camden.